So Monday, 8th of August, was a really bad day for global financial markets. The S&P 500 suffered its biggest daily fall since the dark days of December 2008. Commodity markets tanked. Share markets in emerging economies from Brazil through to Moscow through to Hong Kong all sold off. Gold was up. And the ASX shared about $32 billion. And the bloodbath continued the following day. Just to add to the general era of doom and gloom, London was burning. And in one of those sort of ironies that either makes you grin ruefully or grit your teeth, depending on your temperament, the trigger for all of this was a downgrade by Standard & Poor's of the US sovereign rating from AAA to AA+. And how did markets react to this news? Well, yes, you guessed it. They fled to US treasuries, drove bond yields down, and prices up. What on earth was going on? Well, partly, of course, it was the reaction to the downgrade. It was a historic moment. It created a lot of uncertainty, and people didn't know how to respond. When markets get nervous, what do they do? They tend to sell off. They run for safety. And even despite the downgrade, the thing that people still think of as safe in the world is good old Uncle Sam's treasury paper. But there was more to it than that. There was other things going on as well. In part, of course, none of this should have been a surprise. If you think back to the aftermath of the global financial crisis, a whole bunch of studies came out saying, what does the world look like after you've had a major financial accident? And what they said was, you get slow growth. You get lots of debt. You get high unemployment. Basically, times are going to be bad, and they're going to be bad for a prolonged period. And that's pretty much what we've got. People forgot about that a couple of years ago, and now they're being reminded again. So, so far, so predictable. Unfortunately, there are two other big problems out there as well, one in the United States and one in the Euro area. And since these two are the big, biggest parts of the developed world, what used to be the big engines of the global economy, with both of those going wrong at the same time, it's no wonder that markets got scared. Start with the US first. We just recently had revised US GDP numbers out telling us that between 2007 and 2010, the US economy didn't grow. It basically shrank a little bit every year. Um, that means that the US is already into its own lost decade. And then things got worse. As you will have remembered if you've been watching any of the financial press, the US Congress and the president decided to have a showdown over raising the debt ceiling. In other words, US politics juggled with the creditworthiness of the nation. In the end, both sides blinked, and blinked just about enough to give us the second worst possible deal we could have got. Worst possible deal, deal being default, second worst possible deal being avoid default, but get a fiscal policy package which was precisely the wrong way around. Cut stimulus in the short term to drive down an already weak economy, but fail to deliver any kind of credible um, fiscal rebalancing in the medium term to keep the rating, rating agencies happy. So despite everything else, you still get the downgrade. Markets still panic. US policymaking is no longer AAA, apparently. And after the events of the last two or three weeks, I think most people would think that's a statement of the bleeding obvious. Then we've got the euro area. Again, this is hardly news. There's been a crisis rumbling on in the euro area, more or less since the aftermath of the global financial crisis. First, Greece went down in flames. Then the Europeans tried to draw the line, but Ireland succumbed next. And then Portugal. The problem over the last couple of weeks is that the flames have spread to the two biggest players in southern Europe, Spain and Italy. These are the big guys. They're too big to bail, and they're too big to fail. If they go down, the Eurozone project goes down with them. Until the last few days, markets were starting to get really panicky that the European policymakers, including the ECB, were going to do nothing. They were going to be off on holiday, fiddling or playing or lying on the beach, while Rome and the other European capitals burned. In the end, the ECB got its act together, deployed another acronym, this time called the SMP, um, which basically means that the European Central Bank is now buying government bonds from Spain and Italy. This is a great short-term fix. It's helped stabilize markets. It's drove down yields back down, given a little bit of confidence back. But it's not a fix to the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is that around the Eurozone periphery, lots of countries are fundamentally bankrupt. Other countries have lost a great deal of competitiveness. And the overall policy framework is a partial, half-baked currency area without the institutions and the fiscal transfers needed to make it work. Until the Europeans fix that problem, the Eurozone crisis is also going to continue to rumble on. So, weak growth in Europe, Weak growth in the United States, it's not a good story for the global economy. Markets, as they do, tend to overreact and tend to panic, but somewhat sadly, there are actually some sound reasons for them being nervous right now.